Hi, everybody. Again, my name is Kevin Boyle. Um, I'm the publisher of the Rockaway Times in Rockaway, Queens. Um, I am actually a serial entrepreneur. I know you've had a serial entrepreneur before, but I think um, I'm going to back up. I don't get alarmed if I say I want to begin at the beginning in kindergarten. It looks at my age, that's a long story. But there's a couple of things along the way that you might recognize in yourself as something that I did or thought about, and maybe it'll um, strike you as uh, you know, important information. So I do think beginning at the beginning is helpful. As I go along here, any, any questions, you know, don't necessarily be, want to be tied to a Q&A. If you have anything you want to interrupt or ask me about, or if I'm not clear about, feel free um, to uh, interrupt or just put up your hand or whatever. Um, so the, one of the questions I had in preparing for this was wondering whether an entrepreneur is born or made. And maybe you've asked yourself that question. Maybe you just signed up for this course because it fit your schedule nicely. And maybe it's triggered some stuff for you that now you're thinking about doing something. I mean, way back when, I sold Christmas cards and greeting cards door to door when I was six or seven years old. So I don't know if that made me a born entrepreneur or a born salesman. And there is a difference. But um, I did that. I sold. And in the old days, we used to sell Kool-Aid on the corner. I did that. So in a way, you start businesses, sometimes young. And then I didn't do anything for a long time. I, you know, I wanted to uh, play sports, basically, um, through high school and um, college, and wasn't really thinking about um, anything except being rich and famous, uh, not necessarily sure how to do it. I still have this wide streak in me about get rich quick. It hasn't worked yet, but it's, it's kind of in your, in your DNA sometimes. You just want to get the big idea. Um, I've learned a little bit about that, that it's, and it sounds like the words of an old person, but it's kind of the journey, not the destination, and that happens to be true, even if you can't see it or appreciate it, that your whole trip there, you make the most of it instead of just worrying about what the big score is, because even if you make a big score, there's always going to be something next that you want to do. So um, everybody wants money and all that, I get that, but... Um, the way there is makes for an, an, an interesting life, so don't forget to take moments or take that into consideration. The get-rich-quick stuff is basically impossible, and you shouldn't pursue it, you know. I can say that um, I always had the idea of, um, even though this recent business is June 2014, I've got a few other entrepreneurial um, experiences in my past. A lot of it was always not knowing what I wanted to do, and I'm guessing a large number of you don't know what you want to do with your life. You know, so sometimes people are very um, happy to settle for a job that's nine to five. They like the security. They can see them working their way through a company and all that. And that's what they plot out for themselves. And that's perfectly fine. It just was never f something for me. So since I didn't know what I wanted to do, I kept looking at jobs that might kind of put off the decision about what I really wanted to be when I grew up. So the first thing I considered becoming was a teacher. And the reason teaching work is um, I had the summers off. Didn't really want to do anything like that. It gave me free time to think of what else I might want to do. So um, fireman is another job that I didn't consider, unfortunately. And it's a great job for people, except for the running into burning buildings part. But they've got great schedules. These guys work sometimes three days in a row. They work you know, um, 72 hours in a row. And then they're off for four or five days. And so there are considerations you might, you might consider. Um, if, you're not, if you really want to start a business, but you're really not sure what you want to do, but you know that's your calling, then maybe consider jobs that will give you some money and some exposure and some networking and all that, but maybe it doesn't tie, doesn't tie up all your free time. That's just a little piece of advice that served me well enough that I taught for a few years. And then um, the whole time, I was also trying to feel free. Come in. Don't worry about it. You don't have to tiptoe. Um, so when I was a teacher, I also I thought uh, somebody cursed me uh, early on in my life. They said, oh, you're a good writer. You know? And that stuck with me. So now I started thinking, again, get rich quick. I'd like to write a bestseller. I'd like to write a screenplay for a movie. So then I spent a lot of time um, trying to write in between some, you know, like I said, when I was a teacher, I'd write during the summers or holidays and all that. And um, I, so I focused on screenplays for a while. And screenplay is just the words of a movie. Basically, um, it's 120 pages. I thought that was a shorter way than writing a whole book, which is 300 pages, and I'm basically lazy. So I figured I'll write a screenplay instead. And 
there's an expression in Hollywood where they kill you with encouragement. You just keep getting encouraged all the way, but you never really cash in or um, make it. So I was killed with encouragement. I kept getting enough encouragement to say, ah, I should stick with it, I should stick with it. And then um, a couple of producers would call me up, big producers who, you know, uh, would produce movies with, say, Alec Baldwin or somebody else, a couple of, you know, they'd call, say, oh, we like what you've done here, you know, let me, uh, I, I want to know if anybody's, you know, bought your, or the option is the word, option your screenplay yet, because I want to, because I'm interested. So, you know, you'd be, your fingers crossed, and then you might not hear from them, or they'd call back and say, you know, we decided in a different direction. So a bunch of, you know, um, things that were right, you know, close but no cigar. And all it did was, again, I, I kind of thought it was entrepreneurial in its own way, because writing is, you have to market yourself. So a lot of things that you do um, will be entrepreneurial, though they might not seem it to, in the classic sense. So you've got to market yourself all the time, whether you're um, applying for a job, even if it's one of those nine to five jobs, you're gonna be presenting yourself. It's almost entrepreneurial. You have to find out you know, what's gonna make you different than every other applicant. There's a lot of things you can investigate. So anyway, my writing career went nowhere, and it was finally, I, I um, wound up um, interning at an old age at a movie production company. And uh, this is my you know, breakthrough moment of realizing I gotta let that one go. I signed up, no pay, in the city. It was a production company. They had done some decent movies. But they had a bunch of scripts piled high. And there's another pile over there, another pile over there. And one of those piles had like an inch of dust on it said, friend of Ted. And Ted was the guy who owned the company. So I said, if the friends of Ted aren't getting their scripts read, it was really no different than playing the lottery. And he'd say, you know, we've all seen bad TV shows and bad movies, and you don't know why they got made when there's so many other good things, and you can do so much better. You can't really um, figure out luck in, this, in that business. You know, there's only, there, luck is involved. You know, you've got to, you know, a lot of times you can make your own luck. In a lot of businesses, you make your luck easier than that. So Hollywood, I just said, it's too much luck. You can't really, you're not in charge of your own destiny. So I started thinking about know, other businesses. Um, to try. Always, you know, I'd have a career. I was, the uh, professor mentioned I was an editor and a journalist at um, the Wave newspaper in Rockaway, and I did that for a few years. Still never giving up the idea of not even th running that newspaper so much. It was, what else? You know, it's the get rich quick. What else is going to, you know, do it for me? So again, it's part of me thinking it must be in my DNA that I have this um, urge to get out on my own and do it. It seems to me, and again, if, I don't mean to insult anybody, if Collecting tolls uh, is a job that I'd rather, you know, I'd rather have root canal on a regular basis than just collect tolls or do something that's just by rote every day. I just couldn't do it. So I always had this um, restlessness. And um, I uh, always talked to friends about it. That was one of my, in a way, some of the things I, if I have in common with a friend, it's us talking about the next big idea. Or you'd see somebody else's idea, whether it's Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or anyone in the internet, you know, you'd, you'd talk about how they did it. And it's just one of those common areas of interest. So um, one of the, while teaching and trying to write, another friend of mine suggested we open up a bar. So um, I said yes. And um, this was in the days before cable television. That's how long ago. It was in the late 1980s. Um, there was a baseball team in Brooklyn way back when called the Brooklyn Dodgers, now the Los Angeles Dodgers. I don't want to assume anybody knows that, or everybody knows that. Anyway, um, we decided to uh, open a bar in Bay Ridge. His, this was really my first true entrepreneurial um, jump. And I went in with four partners, which is one of the things you have to consider when you're becoming an entrepreneur. Do you want to do it yourself or do you want to do it with partners? So in a way, it's like a crucial question. And uh, I went in with, so three other, there were four of us, three others. And the reason you consider partners is several. One, money, you can pool your money, and also you pool your expertise, and you pool your duties. So well, you, you're just trying to figure out who's gonna do what. And the money, as you'll know, when you try to start any business, is gonna be your first hurdle. And how much money it's gonna start, uh, you know, it's gonna, you're gonna need to um, start a business. And you're gonna find that it's impossible to raise money. You know, you can read everything you can, and I, 
Um, don't want to discount the idea of business plans and all yet. We'll talk about that in a second. But um, finding somebody to give you money um, on your first go around is going to be nearly impossible. You're going to have to come up with your own, some of your own money by starting at another job and saving, asking your parents, asking your friends, convincing, convincing them. Traditional lenders are just likely not going to give you money. So you can have the best business plan, but if you don't have a track record, you're going to face that. That shouldn't stop you from pursuing your idea. I'm just saying that if, if a bank or somebody says no to your idea, um, and you give up, then you're, you're not really with that idea anyway. You have to be completely single-minded about getting your idea off the ground, whether you get no's or not. So um, in, the, in this particular case, we needed every, we need everybody's money. We each had a little bit of money to put in, and we had different skills so that um, somebody would run the bar, somebody else would do the bookkeeping, um, and then there's a bunch of other uh, different uh, things we had to kind of carve up. So. Um, in a way, my personality is that I always wanted partners in things that I, um, you know, you, you're kind of insecure. So you want to say, isn't this a good idea? And some of you, you want it to be contagious and they're going to say, yeah, that's a good idea. We should do that. And it's kind of reaffirming. They say, okay, if you think it's a good idea and I think it's a good idea, let's do this. And, um, and then it's a matter of jumping off. And sometimes that's where the partner decides they don't, they, they don't think it's a great idea or they get scared. And then, um, you may or may not pursue it. So it's a, a thing that um, I think the whole entrepreneurial path can go in so many different directions, with a partner, without a partner. You know, um, somebody said no, do you still have the, you know, the strength to continue on? So there's a million things that make an entrepreneur. Anyway, long story short, on the bar business, um, the other thing with partners, sometimes you butt heads, you know, you need them to get going, but maybe after a while um, you have different philosophies. Sometimes uh, one of our partners wanted to open up the second bar, right away before we were even really um, familiar with the whole business. And um, so you find a lot of tension and I have to back up a little bit. The idea of a bar is what is everybody's bar restaurant is often everybody's first idea of their own business. They'd say, yeah, I want to start my own business. I would lo love to own his restaurant over here. I recommend highly against it. The thing about restaurants, it's um, a lot of them fail and it's just the 24 seven business and it's, um, again, everybody, a lot of people's first idea about their own business restaurant of some kind. And um, in a way, it's the least creative because everybody says, you know, you're standing in a bar or a restaurant and say, oh, I'd love to own a place like this. And it, seemed, it seems glamorous and all that. It's terrible. It's a terrible lifestyle. Um, the people who are in it are transient themselves. So your, uh, your employees are difficult to deal with because they're in the life. And it's just a difficult thing. If you still do it after my words of wisdom, you can always at least look back and say, I remember that guy said, don't do it. He was so wrong, or I should have listened to that guy. I just wanted to put it out there. It's a, it was a, it's a difficult lesson, but uh, there are other businesses that um, are easier and at least as fulfilling. Um, these, uh, so I stayed with the business, the bar, biz, bar restaurant business for about five years. I wound up selling to my partners and then um, I kind of took a break, got a job at various places, did some teaching again, went to the newspaper, and um, opened up a Domino's Pizza in the middle of all this, as a, just as a silent partner. But thinking that, you know, I'll get something to do, that, you know, open this place that um, you didn't have to love Domino's Pizza to say, okay, it's still a good business in this particular town. It was out in Long Beach. And it was fine, except I wasn't a, an active partner, like I said, and it, that's frustrating in its own way. And um, one of the things you really have to be careful about in any business is the money. So that um, there's, particularly like I said about the bar business, sometimes you have more partners than you realize. With things like cash businesses, you just have to be extra vigilant about staying on top of the cash register and see where things go. I don't want to say everybody is going to steal from you, but you have to be aware that that's a real possibility, that uh, people are not invested in the business like you are. So um, it's just one of those things that you really have to stay on top of. Um, so anyway, let me back up a little bit about business plans too. So if you have an idea for a business, I never wrote one. Most people, I don't, I don't want to say blanket statement, but a lot of mom and pops don't write business plans. Um, but the elements of a business plan are important. You have to say, okay, who, what, why do I have to 
what's my business? Why is, it, why is anybody going to care about it? Why is anybody going to use it? Why are people going to pay money for it? You have got to answer that one. And then you have got to answer, okay, um, how come nobody's doing this for, right now? And if they are, is that competition? Well, what are competition? What's their strengths? What the, what's their weaknesses? So even though you might not be writing this down, all these questions in a business plan are important for you to have and that you can be able to answer. And a lot of times you decide just by going through the list that, you know what, my business isn't as strong as I thought. You know, that it's going to take more money. I've got to come up with rent because I need a storefront. And I need first month, last month security. Okay, that's X amount of thousands right there. Do I have that? Okay, now I need partners to raise that money. So all it does is make you, it's like an honesty test. Am I honest about my chances here? And these, uh, whether it's a table of contents or whatever, just go through it and say, can I do that, can I do that? Um, again, I'm not one to write it down. Um, but everything in a business plan is valuable. You know, you don't have to worry about financials. You know, you open up a business plan that's 50 pages long and it's intimidating. Again, I didn't do it for any of my businesses, but I answered the big questions. Um, before um, taking the plunge. And a lot of times uh, I decided, you know, that wasn't a great idea. It seemed great at night. I wake up, I get going on it. Sometimes it's, okay, how are we going to make money? Which brings me to one, one of my other entrepreneurial ideas, and you're welcome to steal this one because I still think it's a decent one. So a friend of mine, uh, another guy, serial entrepreneur, uh, still waiting to strike it rich, but we had this idea of going around New York asking people for their ideas. Just like that. We had a camera, we had an ideas wanted. We tell people on the street of the High Line, downtown Manhattan, uh, the promenade we did. So we went all over town. Uh, and he's a bit of a ham, you know, he can go up to anybody and talk to him. I did the camera work. And we tell people we're making a documentary, which we had in the back of our mind. We'd make a documentary about stopping New Yorkers on the street and saying, Give us your best idea. And they'd say, What do you know? I'm not going to give you my best idea. You know, you steal it? <laughs> and they'd say, All right give us your second best idea. And they would. And a lot of times then the people would go on to their idea. I said, look, if you think there's a million ideas, do not tell us. And then eventually they were so eager to tell us that sometimes they did. And sometimes the idea, of them, they were nuts. Completely, this is New York after all. So, um, but some were great. Like one guy had the idea for baby bottles. He said, baby bottles should be made in the size of an instrument. So when somebody talks up, it looks like a trumpet, like Louis Armstrong playing a trumpet. I, was baby. I said, a great idea. You know? We'd go home and Google and say, ah, somebody's doing it already. Or somebody had a patent. That's the thing is, there's just about a patent for everything. A lot of times people haven't actually done their ideas. They've got the patent. Or they, and in this particular case, the baby bottle one, I don't think um, they ever uh, pursued it. You know? So it's a patent that was um, dying out. Another one was, uh, paddles and like uh, rowing in the Delaware River that turned the paddles into uh, water guns so people could have water gun fights while paddling down the thing. So these are all ideas we came upon just by asking people. Um, so we were filming it and we were saying, oh, this is great. And then the New York Times comes by and does a story on us because they had seen um, us on the high line. So we get this big story about two guys walking around New York. And again, we went everywhere, Central Park. Staten Island Ferry, big sign, ideas wanted. Everybody would come up saying, what, what is this? And all that. It was a blast. And so then CBS TV gets interested and they're going to follow us around. So now we're thinking, okay, well, how, this goes back to the same question, how do we make money on this? And um, we had a couple of ideas. That's why you can steal this idea, and I'll tell you. Just go around asking people for ideas. We thought reality TV, you know, it's no different than Porn, shot, porn stars or something like that, where um, we just show all the funny people coming up with their ideas. Um, and then we'd say, well, how about going to schools and having kind of an entrepreneurial class where you go into different schools and have these idea conventions where people come in and they exchange ideas. And that's you know, a large part of the internet is exchanging ideas and there's free sharing and all that stuff. So we thought we have to figure out how to either bring into the schools, do a reality TV show, and, and we were having a blast doing it. And it was in fact so much fun, we said, we've got to figure out how to make money on this. And we would have pursued it to this, I don't know what would have happened, but then Hurricane Sandy happened. And pretty much, we never got on CBS, and I live in Rockaway, so my house was damaged considerably, and so was my partners in this. So we dropped it. Um, we still have the tape, we never made the documentary, we had a great time, I still think there's business there. 
Probably for somebody young, we also thought about going on the road, making a road show where you go to different cities, compare the ideas in New York, compare the ideas in Dallas or whatever. You can go anywhere with it. And the thing about the ideas, we called it Ideas Wanted. The thing about it, it lent itself to more ideas. It was very um, energizing. You know, you hear other people in the street, once they opened up about their ideas, it was just like we'd do an hour or two in, uh, in the city and we'd be all juiced, saying, oh, that was awesome. You know, that you meet these people with these great ideas. So anyway, Hurricane Sandy happened. We get knocked out, you know, we have to take care of real life. And I went back to the newspaper that I originally worked for because they asked me to come back. They said, Rockaway is devastated. Uh, we need you to come back and help us. You know, the newspaper had been pretty much wiped out. Would you come back and, you know, help us get off the ground again? And I did. So Ideas One is still on there. And you want to take it? I can give you all the advice on it. I can give you my tapes. You'll see it's a blast. Um, but I went back to writing and I said, look, I did it um, like 10 years earlier. If I come back, I want a piece of the business. I want, you know, I want to be able to um, get some kind of, uh, I want to feel like I'm coming back to more than what I did previously. Can I get part of the ownership? And they said, yes. Um, so I said, but you know what? Why don't we talk about this in about six months because I'm not sure if I'm going to like coming back and I might just you know, say, uh, it's not for me after all. So after I did go back and after six months, the conversation evolved to, do you want to buy the newspaper, the whole newspaper? And again, this newspaper is called The Wave. It's been around for 120 years. And um, we, so we started negotiating about me taking over, becoming um, the owner of it. And I'd keep offering more and more money, different things. So I felt like I was negotiating against myself for a while. And it fell apart, and I just said, well, I'm leaving. And um, they tried to offer me more salary and all that, but I, you know, again, the entrepreneur in me wanted to run the business. I had different ideas what to do, so I just quit. No plans. I have an understanding wife, by the way, um, mm -hmm. with a steady job <laughs> and benefits. Um, that's one of those partner things you've got to work through. Uh, so anyway, I quit. Um, with no intentions. I had a vague idea of maybe doing a magazine uh, in Rockaway, mostly built around the summer businesses and all that, but I didn't really have anything solid. I was just frustrated with not being able to buy in. And another newspaper publisher um, from another part of Queens was kind of watching this from a distance, contacted me and said, why don't we start a rival newspaper? And I let the ego, my ego get the best of me and I said yes because um, I didn't know what I wanted to do exactly. I was, you know, miffed at the previous uh, owner for not really, you know, negotiating in good faith what I thought. So I said yes. And I started a partnership with this person. And within about 20 minutes, I realized it's a mistake. She had a difficult personality. I'm going to blame it all on her. She might have a different story, but I'm 100% right. And she, it was just a bad match. But, and I'm fortunate enough to be old enough to say, I'm not doing this anymore. If I was any younger, this is, no more w words to the wise here. If you feel like it's not working with somebody, your gut instinct is probably worth following, no matter how difficult it might seem. Um, yes, try to talk through things and all that stuff. But follow your gut. And um, my gut was telling me, just end this, pull, pull off that Band-Aid in a hurry. And, but I had already kind of committed to the idea in my hometown. I started telling people I was doing the newspaper. I started, I came out with a date, June 26, 2014, I'm publishing with this other person. And as I saw that, this dissolve, my ego again was out there. I'm saying, oh, look, I've told people I'm going to do this. So um, we published the first one with her as my partner still. And I couldn't take it any longer. <laughs> so uh, I was able to um, basically fire her. I mean, we never really signed an agreement and all that. And the problem with firing, I thought um, the, the reason I even consider a partner in the first place is I thought there was a real secret sauce to running a newspaper. And there's not. It's just that, again, yeah, my in inclination is to have a partner just because you can, you know, walk your way through minefields and see, okay, is this, are we doing this right thing? You can bounce something off this. But she was such a difficult personality. 
I had to get rid of her and then learn everything on my own, um, which I did. So uh, in a way, the lesson of all my entrepreneurial things is that partners are always important to me. I always need it as a, as a crutch, but the one I'm doing now, I really did on my own. I needed her probably as a crutch, which I'm not proud to say to get going. And I said my ego got me started. But the, in the day in and day out stuff, I had to do it myself, which um, I'm most proud of because I got rid of what I thought was a problem and said, look, I'd rather fail by myself than succeed with you. Um, and then I just had to learn a lot of stuff. And a lot of people were helpful. I called somebody else who runs another newspaper on the other end of Rockaway, Breezy Point, and they, he, he steered me to people that I could use for the printing, for the layout, and all the things that go in a newspaper. So um, it was really a 24-7 kind of endeavor where I just had to keep hustling. And um, now things are settled in. It took me uh, you know, about six months of craziness um, to really learn the business and get to a place where I could come on Thursday to St. Francis and talk about it. But um, I guess the lesson here is I'd say if I was going to do something again by myself, I would do it. I taught myself that, OK, I don't need a partner necessarily unless they're going to bring real strengths to it. I don't think there's anything wrong you know, with partners, uh, but just beware that uh, it's one of those things in entrepreneurialism that it's always going to come up. If you have a great idea, you're going to share it with somebody. and. Is that person the right person to go in business with? It's a tough one. You know, in some cases, um, it'll be an easy answer. Other times, not so much. You know, again, we're going back to strengths and weaknesses. Is somebody a tech person, but you're not? You're better in sales, or you this, you know, you're the person who has this idea, and you need somebody else because they do this well. You know, it's a, it's one of those things that are are difficult. Um, the newspaper business you may have heard is going out of business. You know, it's dying. But I'll tell you this: that in small communities. It's anything but dying. A lot of people still want to know um, what's, there's an expression called hyper-local. You're really local. You know, the Daily News and the Post try to please everybody and please no one in a way. But your local newspaper, they're going to find out, you know, say if there's um, a, some bar or restaurant having a band that night, you're going to likely find it in the newspaper. Maybe you'll find it in social media, yeah. But advertisers are not confident completely that they're going to put the word out about um, their business on social media and it's going to work. So, you know, if you're a, a cleaners, you might want to put it in the newspaper because people will say, oh yeah, there's a cleaners on this street. You know, not everybody's going to get on their phone and look for a cleaners in their neighborhood. Or the, at least the cleaners doesn't believe that. You know, not uh, people your age, you'll get on your phone. But they're also trying to reach people my, my age who are not so comfortable with stuff. So um, that's just. You know, again, the newspaper seems like a dying business. It's not. In fact, I've even considered, um, and one of the curses of being an entrepreneur is that as soon as you get some kind of comfort or you have five minutes to think, you start thinking of your next business. So uh, I'm in a newspaper business. I'm thinking, you know, this might work in Jersey City or this might work, uh, you know, somewhere else that uh, now that I know what I'm doing. Um, so that's, you know, the basic curse of it in a way. As I motor along here, I'm not sure where we are on time, but um, yeah. So I, you know, I've had a long career of ups and downs, failures, um, personality mixes, and all that. And I don't want to bore you terribly, but um, if there's anything that you know you feel like I didn't cover, or what about this? Please feel free, including if you have ideas, you can ask me what I think about them. But I encourage somebody here to steal my ideas wanted idea. It costs nothing and it's fun. Any questions? I didn't cover everything, did I? Good. Any regrets? Any regrets? Hmm. I don't think so. You know, I uh, think I could have done something better a lot of times. You know, I. Um, one of the regrets is sometimes um, and it's the rich and famous part. You shouldn't try to be rich and famous. <laughs> that uh, if it happened, and the other thing actually, that you just, back to when I started about the journey and the destination, like um, in a way I failed at writing in a way, you know, in, in a way I failed at the bar restaurant business. I sold out at a profit and all that. Um, 
but I think they all contribute to you learning or preparing me for now. That you'd say, okay, I wish I had done this. I wish I didn't go into business. My brother and I were in partners. That's another thing. Family, you know, uh, we didn't speak for a while. Friends again, but that's another danger of having partners that are family members or asking family members for money. Um, those are stuff. So you learn from them. So, but I don't know if I regret because I regret that obviously that I wasn't talking to my brother for a while. But on the other hand, I learned from it. So um, it's a good question. But I, uh, you know, it's like any in a way. Yes, do we regrets? On the other hand, the, uh, you know, there's good to be had. You know. But uh, I do want to back up about the money part. You know, again, this shouldn't stop you. You have to, if you've got an idea that you really want to pursue, um, the proof will be if you can get past obstacles. You know, money's going to be the first one, mostly. Pressure from the outside, your parents, your friends, like, oh, what are you wasting your time with and all that, you know. Those are things that um, you kind of have to tune out. And it's hard, you know, especially when I was trying to write and, um, you know, I'd send stuff out. And then there would be weeks, months before somebody said anything, and you know, uh, everybody wants to know what you're doing, and it's a, it's a hard. Uh, nobody asks me that now, but it's, it's hard, you know, tuning it out and saying, you know, uh, oh, you haven't made it big yet. Uh, you know, it's, it's. I'm at the age where I could slow down. On the other hand, so what's the point? You know, I don't want to golf. You know. Um, and uh, it's just more fun. To me, that's where it goes down to like, okay, you could have that career with all that uh, security and all that stuff, but I said, oh, I'd rather just try. It's like um, creating anything. You're like, oh, that's good. That came out. Or, you know, you do something that you're proud of. So the next thing you want to do is make something that you can be proud of. And um, I'm not quite sure it'll be. I have, I, part of me wants to. Um, do another newspaper or have a couple, I have a few of them. The worry I have in a way is, okay, I'm, I'll be changing my life by doing that. You know, it's like I'm running the newspaper now, uh, I'm doing a little bit of everything, but if I have to run two newspapers, my job will change. And now, well, I like that new job. I also, let me back up, you, you remind me of another thing that when I started the newspaper 24 7, I did everything selling, delivering writing the stories, I did everything, and a lesson I think you might, whatever your business is, I never asked anybody to do something I haven't done. So whether it was in the bar business, I was mop floor sometimes, I worked, the bar, worked as a bartender, did payroll, went to the bank. So any job you start, do everything so you can tell the next person, look, I'm not asking you to do something I haven't done. And, um, and I, I think that's, even without asking anybody, it's worth doing every part of the job so you really know your job inside out. So that, um, that's an important point that I forgot. So in, you know, I know if I um, start a new business, I'll be doing everything again from scratch. Um, and sometimes that gives me pause, you know, that, but there's also that driving thing and say, you know, I still, I still want to do something else. So I don't know if anybody has any ideas that, uh, Oh, and even sharing on ideas, which every, going back to my ideas wanted, um, don't be so protective about your ideas. You may have a great idea um, that you don't want to share. It's your idea. I can 100% get it. But the person you tell has to have the same passion as you to pull it off. If, you know, it's your idea, you have the passion, you're going to pursue it. So I think there's more value in sharing it and learning what the feedback will be from it rather than keeping it to yourself. A lot of times people keep ideas to themselves, will never act on it. You know, putting it out there puts a little more pressure on you. Okay, I've told this guy, somebody, I want to do this idea. Now I really got to do it. You know, you do put some pressure on yourself and you'll get feedback. Oh, what about this? What about that? I want to open a pizza place down on the corner. Oh, what about Gino's over there? What about Sal's over there? They got the best. And you say, no, I want this kind of, and you say, mine's going to be different for this reason. So you, I think there's more value in throwing your stuff out there and getting feedback than holding on to your idea like it's the greatest one. As I said about even the, the baby bottle, the guy wanted to be a trumpet. Somebody had already thought about it. It's really, any of your ideas, Google it, you know. Somebody's tried it. The beauty of it is you can see sometimes where they went wrong or they tried it in California or Delaware and say, yeah, they, they, never, they don't have any of those in Brooklyn, you know. This, this would be perfect here. So um, put it out there. Investigate, you know, any idea, great idea, Google it immediately. Chances are one form of it or another is already out there. But you can learn from it. So uh, this, again, that's just a little piece of advice that 
your idea could be a great one, and you've got the passion for it. I'm not sure if anybody else will, so don't be afraid of sharing it. Anything? Mm -hmm. Um, did you have any mentors like that you stuck to as you were transitioning to each new endeavor? No, I wish I had. You know, occasionally um, somebody would, uh, you know, it's a nugget here and a nugget there. That uh, a lot of it was um, seat of the pants, you just do it and you become your own mentor in a way and you try not to make the same mistakes. But um, actually, and that's another good point. I didn't have classes like this. These are good things. You know, I'll hand out my business card if questions occur to you later on. You know, you might want to start a newspaper somewhere or something similar, a magazine or an online blog and how do you make money. I have a little bit of insight to all that stuff. But classes like this are invaluable. I just think that uh, and they were not um, around in my day. You know, the, the, believe it or not, when I first, my first go around in the newspaper, pe people didn't even have email. You know, that's never mind the internet. So um, the internet has proven uh, time and time again that little ideas can spark great, fantastic things. And, you know, entrepreneurial classes is one of them because people, you know, we're all familiar with the big stories of who made it with um, just an idea. Um, but um, um, mentors are more out there now than they used to be because they're more entrepreneurial. I mean, and I know the professor, you've, you've covered this, that little shop owners are entrepreneurs. You know, I mean, you walk down the street, you're going to see entrepreneurs. There's just different kinds. Um, a lot of people don't have time because they're working all the time or they're not familiar with this industry or that industry or new technology. They're out there um, and always worth, and I didn't have them, but they were probably there and I didn't look hard enough, you know, because um, I don't think there's a downside to getting advice. It's whether you take it or not. You know. I think a, a variety of reasons. Some, it could be as simple as not having the writing skill or confidence to put one sentence after another sometimes. Um, sometimes it could just be fear that they don't want to face the truth, um, that the hard questions is something somebody doesn't want to ask. So that's really why I go back to, even if you don't actually write the business plan, you have to address basically every point in it. Um, and I'm, I was a writer by trade and I couldn't put a business plan together, you know. I just found it physically hard. I'd start something with well, it's a good sentence and then I'd say, what am I doing this for? I'm not going to get money out of it anyway. So um, in, in my own experience, uh, I don't want to make an excuse because I know there's value in it. I definitely do, especially if you, if you want to convince friends who are not that familiar with a lot of the things you're, um, you know, Pizza place is a bad idea, but if you have a, an internet idea, some kind of a new app or something like that, you might have to educate people to what it is exactly instead of just give them, you know, a quick spiel. So um, in the case of the bar, we actually did have a business plan way back when. So, but I have to say that was my partner, my brother who wrote it, you know, what have I done? I don't know, but he did it and I was grateful that he did it. And again, it goes back to a little bit of what are your partner's strengths if you do have a partner. Um, so I'm definitely not dismissing business plans. Um, I just know that um, they're difficult, and I don't <laughs> they are excruciating, you know. And that um, sometimes you have to do them for a class. You have to do it. But uh, if I do this next newspaper and I go to Jersey City, I'm going to have at least an outline of one. Whether I call it an executive summary or not, I don't know, but I'm at least going to have one. And financials and cash flows, no way, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to at least think about it. And I'm saying that honestly, I'm not just saying it here today. Um, so yeah, just look at, look at one, make sure, you, if you got an idea, okay, address this, yes, this is why, this is why the business is going to work. And this is how it's going to work, and this is who's going to make it work. Um, a lot of times, the money, though, is really what it comes down to. Um, you'd say, this is a great idea, everything except how are we going to make money? And um, I'll go back to my ideas wanted. It's a good idea. I'm not quite sure how you can make money on it, but um, which is, you know, sometimes you have to, like, oh, say you write a blog or you do some app. You know, you can have test phases. You don't have to make money right away. You can see where it can grow later on. So that, uh, you know, I really discouraged the whole get rich quick. That doesn't mean that's not proof of, an, of, of a success. You know, that's um, something to keep in mind that, you know, if your life 
if you're struggling financially but you really like what you're doing, believe me, that's the good life. That's a good life if you like what you're doing, if you can carve that out. And it's always, say, you know, you know, it's an old expression, you know, find, like, find what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. It happens to be true. Like I go in, uh, the professor again mentioned I work out of a um, taxi booth. So when Hurricane Sandy happened, there had been a car service there. So just a booth like you'd see, like they'd sell slushies or something. Or ice. And um, it was vacant. So I put it out there and got in there. And um, I forget where I was going with that to begin with. But, um, you know, anyway, yeah, no, I go in on Saturdays and Sundays. So it's, and I don't feel like, oh, I'm going in. I got to work on a Saturday or Sunday. I don't feel like I'm working. You know, I'm just going in because what else are they doing on a Saturday afternoon on, you know, it's 35 degrees out. And that, uh, you know, so I go in and I'll work on the paper in one way or another, try to get more advertisers, try to figure out what other columns would be good to help the paper, you know, how we get out there. So I can't say enough about trying to find out what, how you can sustain yourself for your own business because you will not regret it if, if, it, if it floats along at some level where it can sustain itself, it'll be the best decision you ever made. You'll never feel like you're working and uh, there's a lot to be said for that. So. Anything else? I'm going to give out my card. I'll leave my card maybe on the front here. Um, again, if uh, something strikes you, uh, I'm easily reached. And um, if you ever want to write an article, a freelance article, that's another thing you might want to do. Build up your resume. Talk about this class. Talk about your ideas. You're welcome to do that too. So that, uh, you know, I'm not quite sure how many real entrepreneurs will come out of this class, but. Um, if you're any writers out there, budding writers, and you want to get a, you know, something in print, Rockway Times is a good place to start. So uh, open invitation. Yeah, thank you.